in addition to the 23 of us who were subpoenaed to the grand jury um, and whose homes were raided, uh, the, the most important case is that of our brother Carlos Montes. Carlos is, is on trial in Los Angeles um, on uh, trumped up charges of, of violating uh, uh, California's uh, gun codes. Um, and the, uh, the case rests on a claim by the FBI and the district attorney that um, Carlos was convicted of a felony 42 years ago um, from a protest uh, to uh, create um, ethnic studies at a local city college um, out there. But it's quite serious. The, um, the, the district attorney um, is uh, determined to, uh, to win this case and uh, Carlos could face as many as 22 years in prison um, if this goes through. So and it's something that a, a felon can never own a pistol again or something like that? That's correct. You can. Uh, and um, several years ago, Carlos lives in a neighborhood with a high crime rate. Um, he purchased uh, actually um, two firearms. Um, and, uh, uh, and he purchased them legally. He filled out the, the California applications. Um, you know, he said on the application that he was not a felon, because he's not a felon. Um, and they, uh, they allowed the, um, you know, they did the background check on him and there was no felony in his uh, background. Well, um, the, the FBI began going through um, Carlos's uh, files and history, legal history, at the same time they started to go through mine and the rest of the anti-war activists when we were among the main organizers of the protest, the last big anti-war protest um, in the country against the Iraq War, which took place at the Republican National Convention in St. Paul in 2008. Carlos was one of the um, main speakers at the demonstration. Um, and when the FBI raided the anti-war committee two years later, September of 2010, there were 22 uh, names on the warrant that they left at the anti-war committee's offices and all of the others have been subpoenaed to the grand jury except for Carlos. And we actually recently learned that, um, that uh, the investigation uh, into Carlos's uh, legal history had been going on even prior to, we got a document in discovery um, that, he got a document in discovery that, that they were investigating his legal history um, you know, in September of 2010. So. so it looks like this is going to rest uh, ostensibly on a fine point of if, if he was convicted of a felony or not. What do they uh, say? There is no question that the record shows that he was um, convicted of a misdemeanor. In, in California um, law, um, there's, there, there are some f charges that could be felonies or misdemeanors, and in the case of the charge that he had, this was a protest in which the police attacked the students, and um, Carlos um, uh, threw an empty pop can at a cop, and it bounced off of his arm, and for that he was charged with a charge that was a felonious charge. But when it was finally, when he finally came to court, it was resolved as a misdemeanor. And the way that California um, uh, law defines it is if you're given prison time, um, it's considered a felony. He was not given prison time. He didn't do any time for this. So it's pretty clear to his lawyers and to us that this was resolved as a misdemeanor. But the FBI claims otherwise. They claim they have evidence otherwise. What's been uh, the popular response? Is there popular support for him in California? Um, there has been a, a real outpouring of support, especially from the Chicano and immigrant rights movement, where he's been his home for the last 40-some years. And, uh, you know, every time there's a court appearance, there's, um, you know, 100 uh, people or more who've come out for it. Um, there's actually a, just this month, um, a uh, glossy magazine in Los Angeles, Los Angeles Magazine it's called, um, ran an eight-page uh, uh, article um, uh, basically telling Carlos's life story and, uh, and, uh, uh, and contrasting his history of, of activism 
you know, for justice with the, with the absurd claims that the FBI and the district attorney have um, in this case. So he's, um, he's getting an, an enormous amount of support. The, the California Teachers Association, 350,000 members just um, adopted a resolution in his defense. Um, and, you know, and more and more with each, with each passing month, there's more support for him. Now, is he in jail at this point or is he out on bail? Uh, Carlos is out on bail and he is on trial. Um, his, the, the trial uh, uh, began um, last summer, uh, or, you know, he began court, having court appearances last summer, um, and the trial has begun in earnest in the last several months. Um, they're going through discovery, uh, and um, the um, the strategy of you know his legal strategy is to bring out again and again that the FBI started this investigation into him, uh, into his legal history because of his political activism. The judge so far has refused to allow any questions um, about the FBI's role or any evidence about the FBI's role in this. Um, and uh, even though in uh, the local papers, uh, Los Angeles Sheriff Department spokespersons said um, you know, openly that, the, that this was an FBI case. The FBI brought this to them to, to get involved in this case. Um, so it's, it's a matter of public record but the judge ref is refusing to allow it to be entered into the court record. What about all those people who were subpoenaed last year? It's kind of surprising the government thought this was so serious and nothing has happened. Well, um, I'm, I'm, I'm one of them. My home was raided in September of 2010, my wife and I. And um, the most recent news we have was from January when we, um, we asked the government to unseal the indictments they, they had to, I mean, they had to have, not the indictments, the um, affidavits. They had to have affidavits to, um, in order to justify search warrants and the subpoena to the um, grand jury. And so we asked the U.S. Attorney's Office uh, and, and the U.S. Attorney's spe um, Special Prosecutor, who's handling our case, is a man named Barry Jonas, and he said that he would not unseal the affidavits because we are the subject of an ongoing criminal investigation. And one of the reasons that, um, that we feel that it is so important to defend Carlos, um, besides the fact that it's just a matter of justice, is that we feel that their efforts to prove a criminal conspiracy, um, in, that their strategy includes to actually have one of us be guilty of a crime if they can convict Carlos Montes of this of this uh, trumped up uh, gun violation um, you know this, you know firearm violation um, then uh, uh, then you know they'll they'll somehow fold that into their conspiracy case against us so in a word just because we're not seeing any big developments it's still very serious uh, that's correct the uh, the um, the US Attorney's Office has told our lawyers uh, that they, are, they have multiple indictments, that they are um, uh, ready. In fact, a year ago, they told our lawyers that uh, they had enough to indict us already, even if we didn't appear in front of the grand jury. But um, uh, so we, uh, we, we, we believe that the reason they never forced us to appear before the grand jury is because of the political support that especially from the anti-war movement. Mm -hmm.